In this video, I will tell you how to learn Arabic to understand the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's your brother Muhammad al Andalusi, founder of AndalusiInstitute.com. And in this video, we are going to understand how to learn the Arabic language to understand the Quran. Now, very important. Important. I'm going to tell you four points about how to learn Arabic to understand the Quran and each point is going to explain the other point All right, so it's very important that you stay until the end in order to get the full picture All right, so let's get straight into the first point The first point guys is learn Arabic vocabulary This is literally the second time I'm recording this and the first time I spent like 10 minutes explaining these points So I'm not going to go crazy like I did But basically, Arabic vocabulary, you guys always hear me say it. The Quran, most of it is day-to-day -day Arabic, okay? There are many brothers and sisters when they first start learning the Arabic language, they go like, oh yeah, why would I want to learn about the clouds? Why would I want to learn about how to say hello to someone? Why would I want to know about how to say how are you? I'm trying to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. I don't want to learn the day-to-day -day Arabic. Like, I remember once I asked a brother, I was just talking to him, like, we're gonna go to the train station now. No, we're going to... And he was supposed to be like amongst the brothers, you know, a brother we benefit from. He reads books from the ulama to us, etc, etc. But he was like, what is Al-Qitar? Which was very shocking to everyone because it's like, what? Didn't you know Arabic? Obviously at that point, I didn't know Arabic myself to even judge who has a level or not. But it was very shocking. Like, oh, you don't know what train is? I mean, that's in the first books of <laughs> So basically, many brothers are like this. Like, oh, I'm trying to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. I don't need to learn this. I don't need to learn how to say tomatoes in Arabic and they say it with this voice like yeah I don't need to no I'd say bananas and they <laughs> and they say, say it with that particular voice two hours later <coughs> <clears throat> and then basically they find later on that they're not able to speak they're not able to communicate but they happy with the little percentage that they understand from the explanation of Surah Thalatha and Kashf al-Shubuhat and Qawaid al arba so yeah man Arabic vocabulary please don't listen to all these people learn that language like a baby would do like start learning the language with day-to-day -day words vocabulary words and what I mean by vocabulary words you need to acquire at least 10,000 lexical items like for example mirror how to say mirror in Arabic mirror and you memorize with it the plural Mir'atun Maraya and believe me if you don't memorize the plural in the beginning later on you're going to feel pain Mir'atun Maraya Famun Afwahun Usborn Asabi' Aynun Uyunun A'yun Anfun Unuv and like that and you memorize words and its plurals and keep in mind as well many words have different plurals like for example Baytun Buyutun Abiyatun okay Baytun Buyutun the jam Abiyatun and each plural will be used in a particular context so it's very important to then listen to people who knows Arabic to see in what context that plural is used. Why do I say this? Because for example, Beitun, Buyutun, now that I just said it came to mind, the Arab used to refer to house, to a specific house. They want to say the plural, they would say Buyut, houses. But Abiyatun, they would use it for the lines of poetry. And they say because, you know, a paragraph of poetry is kind of like a house that meanings and rhymes live in. Okay, that's the philosophy as it was reported. So they would use Abiyat, not that it doesn't mean houses as well, but they use it for that particular context. And then there are different meanings for each particular plural depending on the pattern of that plural. So for example, Uyunun is Jamu Kathra and then Ayun is Jamu Killa. Jamu Kathra meaning the plural that refers to many and the Ayun refers to, yes, more than two, but to not many. Jamu Killa. So from three to ten and like that. You know, there is many meanings and different things that you are going to benefit later on if you focus on memorizing nouns with its plurals, the two plurals if they have two. Then as well, what I mean by memorizing vocabulary, I mean memorizing conjugations of verbs, especially the ones that are thulathi, the ones that have three letters like akala, kataba, dhahaba. So memorize the whole conjugation. Dhahaba, yadhabu, idhab, dhahabun, dhahibun, madhub. The past tense, present tense, the imperative, command, the masdar, the source of the verb, fa'il, and the maf'ul. The one that does the action and the one that the action is done upon. Akala, kulu, kul, aklu, nakilun, ma'kul, kataba, yaktub, uktub, kitabatun, katibun, maktub. As 
though in the masdar, in the source, they are going to be different masadir. Like for example, in kitab, there is kitabatun, there is kitabun as well, and there is katbun. And for example, arifa ya'rif, ma'rifatun, wa'irfanun, wa'irfun. So there are many different vocabulary words in the masdar itself. And each of those masadir is used in a particular context as well. So what happens if you memorize just one? Later on, when you're going to be reading, you won't know that particular word, even though you know the conjugation verb of it, and you won't understand, therefore, the sentence. So very important, memorization of vocabulary, it all goes back to memorization of vocabulary. Like, I'm, I'm tired of reminding it. Like, put some respect on this concept, man. Like, whoever tells you that vocabulary is not necessary, just go straight to grammar. He's either lying to you, either he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I say this, bimil ifi, and I say this for my chest. All right, let's go into the next point. Arabic grammar is very important. Learn Arabic grammar in order for you to understand the Quran. Why do I say this? It's because if you don't know Arabic grammar, there are going to be many things when reading the Quran that you won't understand. Like, for example, Allah says in the Quran, min ibadihi al Here, in the common order, in English and in Arabic as well, is that first, the person that does the action comes in the sentence. So, for example, I say, he ate, we already know who's doing it, so he, he ate an apple. So, the subject, the thing that the action falls upon, the action of eating, falls on the apple, and the apple came later. So, first, we want to know who did it, and then what happened. The same with Arabic. You say, akala rajulu tufahatan. That's the most common order. Even though it can be different, as I'm going to explain to you guys. So first, rajul is the one that did the action. Tufaha is the apple, the thing that the action fell upon. So then, if I say now, innama yakhsha allaha. Innama is basically like saying, but actually, but rather, yakhsha, yakhsha means to fear. Allah, min ibadihi, from his servants, al ulama. If you don't understand grammar, you will say, wait, but rather, fears Allah from his servants, the scholars. So how does Allah fear the scholars? Like, how does that work? But if you know grammar, you will see. So we know that when you learn Arabic grammar, the subject, like the apple here, he ate the apple. The subject, you always have a particular vowel by default, which is the fatha. Not all the time. There are different signs that that thing is the subject. But by default, if you say, inna ma ha, and you see a fatha. If you know Arabic grammar, this is the maf'ul bihi. This is the subject. This is the thing that is falling upon, even though the order is not as usual. And then later on, you see al ulama u. And you see a dhamma, which by default is the one that does the action in the sentence. Al fa'il. So it's almost as if Allah said it in a different order, just for eloquence. Just like if I say, an apple I ate. It's like, okay, why are you trying to be fancy, like changing the order and everything? That's what Allah used. This type of order is what Allah used in inna ma Allah. That indeed, those who fear Allah from his servants are the ulama, are the scholars. If you don't know grammar, there are going to be many things in the Quran that are going to be confusing. All right, so this brings me to the third point. The third point is that you need to have the mindset and understand that you want to understand. Understand once you have learned Arabic vocabulary and you have 10,000 plus lexical items, which is what your linguist says, the amount that you need in order for you to know a language at a native like speaker level and most of obviously understand the grammar. Once you know all of these things, understand still that you want to understand. Why do I say this? There was, it was reported by Ibn Abbas, Sufyan al-Thawri and Ibrahim ibn Muhajir and Mujahid and Ibn Abbas. كنت لا أدري ما فاطر السماوات والأرض حتى أتاني أعربيا يختصما في بئر فقال أحدهما لصاحبه أنا فطرتها أنا بدأتها فقال ابن عباس أيضا فاطر السماوات والأرض بضيء السماوات والأرض سفيان reported from Ibrahim ibn Muhajir and from Mujahid and from Ibn Abbas from Mujahid that Ibn Abbas said I didn't know what فاطر السماوات والأرض meant which is basically something that you will find in the Quran فاطر السماوات والأرض خالق كل شيء لا إله إلا هو and it comes many times in the Quran فاطر السماوات so Ibn Abbas says, I didn't know what that meant until I saw a Arabian yakhtasiman fi bi'arin. Until I saw two Arabs argue about it or argue about a particular well. So then one of them told the other one, Ana fatartuha, Ana badatuha. I started this well. Almost as if they were arguing, like, why you come here? I'm the one that started this well. Why you come into this thing? So then because he heard, Ibn Abbas heard how that Arab used it, Fatir fatartuhu, badatu, I started it. So Fatir is samawati wal ard is the one that started the skies and the earth. Earth. Meaning that then he understood the ayah and understood what Allah meant by Fatiru Samawati wal Ard. He understood what Allah meant by I am the one that started the skies and the earth. So this shows you that here Ibn Abbas he had the two first points that we are looking for in order to understand the Quran. He had Arabic vocabulary, he had Arabic grammar because it was his language, just like you in English know Arabic grammar by default, even though you don't know titles and the chapters and what this is and what the gerund and this and that, but you know how to speak grammatically correct. So by default you already know it. So Ibn Abbas the same. He had vocabulary, he had grammar. But he, some
sometimes wouldn't understand certain words until Allah gave him the makana and gave him the grade and the honor of obviously being Tarjuman al Quran and being the one that was amongst the Sahaba most known for interpretation of the Quran. And the Prophet made dua for him to give him the right interpretation of the Quran, etc., etc. But he had to go through that process of not understanding certain things, even though it was his language and even though he knew Arabic grammar. So you need to understand that you won't understand the Quran fully, except which I will tell you how in the conclusion of the video, how you will understand the Quran, obviously. And this brings me to this point as well that Ibn Abbas said as well. Qala ibn Jaririn, haddathana Muhammad ibn Bashar, haddathana Mu'ammal, haddathana Sufyan ibn Abi Zinad, qala ibn Abbas, at-tafsiru ala arba'ati awjuhin, wajhun ta'rifuhu al-arabu min kalamiha, wa tafsiru la ya'adharu ahadun bi jahalatihi, wa tafsiru ya'lamuhu al-ulamau, wa tafsiru la ya'lamuhu illa Allah. Ta'ala dhikruhu, wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. Here Ibn Jarir reported from Muhammad ibn Ashar, from Mu'ammal, from Sufyan and Abi Zinad, that Ibn Abbas said that at-tafsir are of four types. The first one is a type that all Arab understand. And this is why I told you guys in the beginning, when you learn Arabic vocabulary, you will understand 70% of the Quran already because the Quranic Arabic is just normal classical Arabic. When we say Arabic, we are referring to the Quranic Arabic, okay? There is no such thing as Quranic Arabic. No, it's just Arabic. Many people, they say Quranic Arabic to differentiate from Arabic dialects, but Arabic dialects, they don't even have the honor to even be on the same classification as classical Arabic. They are are just derivants and they are just butchered and messed up versions of that classical Arabic. So when we say Arabic without specifying anything, we are talking about classical Arabic, which is Quranic Arabic. So he says that there are four types of tafsir. The first one is one that all Arab understand. They read the Quran and it's regular speech for them. And then another one, tafsirun la ya'adharu ahadun bi jahalatihi. There is another type of tafsir that nobody, meaning from the Muslims, are would be justified for them to not understand. They have to understand. You need to understand as a Muslim, qul huwa Allahu Nobody has even other a justification or an excuse for him to not understand. And then, obviously, if you know Arabic, and many if, if, ifs. But that's the explanation of Ibn Abbas. Then another one that tafsirun ya'lamuhu ulama A tafsir that the ulama know. A tafsir that only the ulama know. And this is why when many people, they ask me, oh, yeah, Muhammad, when we join Andrews Institute and we go through the program of two years on average and we become fluent, do we understand the Quran? And the answer is long because, you know, I need to explain all of this. There are certain things that only the ulama understand from the Quran. You are going to understand what the regular Arab, like the first point of these four awjuh, of these four types, that ta'rifuhu al-Arabu bi kalamiha, that, you know, everybody understands that knows Arabic. The first point, yes, you're going to get that. But there is a certain tafsir of the Quran that only the ulama know. And this is why we have the tafsir. So yes, you are going to understand through the tafsir. You go back to the tafsir, read the tafsir that explains to you what this word mean, what that word mean, and therefore understand the Quran. And then the fourth type of this tafsir, I'm getting high. Ah, man, Are you serious? This is getting me <sighs> excited. And then the fourth tafsir is a tafsir that only Allah Azza wa Jal knows. Like for example, Alif Lam Mim in certain parts in the Quran that only Allah Azza wa Jal knows. It's tafsir. We haven't been given the hikmah and the wisdom behind or the meaning behind this. So yeah, these are four types of uh, tafsir. And therefore, this brings us to what we were talking about that you won't understand that you won't understand. Like it requires even the ulama they don't understand the whole Quran like that without actually having studied and going through the text and going through the tafsir. It's not as simple as opening the Quran and reading and boom, you are eloquent all of a sudden and understand everything and are you an alim at the same time because there are certain things that are required in order for you to understand the whole Quran as you read it. You need to understand about sulfir, you need to understand about aqidah, you need to understand about fiqh itself, you need to understand about usul tafsir, you need to understand balagha, which brings me to the four point, al balagha, which is basically eloquent. And basically, I'm going to give you a very simple example. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Was alil qarya, And ask the city or ask the village. Now, we all know that you cannot ask a village. But what is meant by it is ask the people in the village. So, all of these types of eloquence used in the Quran was alil qarya and as the village and you know many other different points in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal uses the most and highest ranks of eloquence that makes the person that doesn't have this which is actually an Arabic expression that we previously spoke about on my Instagram which by the way guys follow me here on Instagram we always have Arabic expressions etc the person that doesn't read in between the lines and doesn't have this 
understanding of eloquence and what does Allah mean by was al qariya and ask the village. How can you ask a village? No, he means ask the people in the village. But because of its eloquence and highest ranks of eloquence, he said it in a different way, in a more eloquent way, in a more fluid and short way that means that particular thing. That's what Balagha deals with, what eloquence deals with. And saying, for example, oh, he is a lion. You don't mean like he's a lion specifically, but you mean that he carries the characteristics of a lion, like a shuja'a, the strength and the braveness, all of these things that a lion has of good characteristics, you are saying that he is a lion because he carries those characteristics. And that's what eloquence deals with. So bringing us to the conclusion of this video, if you go ahead and go through these four things, which obviously on average, it will take you at least two years to acquire these four points, Arabic vocabulary, Arabic grammar, understand that you don't understand, meaning the mindset. There is something that you acquire going through this process, which could be explained with what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because it's going to definitely be a roller coaster and it's going to definitely be a painful journey this whole journey this is a very valid point to understand that you don't understand and it takes time for you to understand that you don't understand and for you to be self-aware because the more you learn the more you realize you don't know and then the fourth point which is learning about balagha once you acquire these four points then inshallah you are going to understand the quran as an alim inshallah and i say this before Ifi, and I say this with my chest that inshallah if you go through these four points that you have it as a goal you will understand the Quran as an alim and be able to understand the Quran and the tafsir of the Quran it will be very easy for you to then read the Quran and feel those feelings and those meanings while you are standing behind the imam in a taraweeh and you hear all of these people crying and you don't understand what they're crying and most of the times these people that are crying are the ones that understand and they cry because of the meanings and because those ayat and those those verses that were recited they spoke to them directly because of something they are going through in life etc etc that's when you are going to sincerely be submitted to Allah and be a person that not only practices a translated version of their religion but practices the religion that was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam revealed by Allah azza wa jal through the angel Jibril alayhi salam and then we will go ahead and acquire what we are looking for which is getting closer to Allah one thing that I want to do if you are a real one and you have watched until the end of this video and you are hearing me say this right now go ahead and type in the comments how to learn Arabic to understand the Quran I want to see this to see the real ones so I remember the names and then you type this and then you type another comment to say what point of these points you know made you think or was an aha moment or was very beneficial and share your thoughts inshallah and I will take from their ideas to make future videos I really enjoyed this video and I will see you guys on the next one all right don't forget as well that if you want to learn the arabic language go ahead and click the link in the description that will lead you to a page and then you are going to be able to go ahead and book a call with my team so we can talk to you and see if we can actually help you and if you are a good fit for the program and then see if there is a synergy for us to work together towards acquiring this journey of uh, understanding the quran